What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna teach you how to shoot on manual, so stay tuned to learn all about it. What's up guys, my name is Jesus Martinez and I'm a San Diego creator trying to go full time. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to follow the journey. And somebody was telling me that it didn't work, so I don't know if the subscribe button is working. If you guys could just click on it to check, appreciate it. Thanks. All right guys, so some of you have been asking me how to shoot on manual and I wanted to make this like crash course to just get you guys going, get you guys started and have you guys knowing what you're doing and shooting on manual. So to start off, manual shooting, it's all compiled of shutter speed, aperture and ISO. These three components are what it takes to create a photo. This is how you will control the light, create certain effects and be able to do whatever you want with your camera. Now the first component is aperture and aperture has to do with the blades that are built inside your lens. These open and close and it will determine how much light is going into your camera through the lens. Again, aperture controls the light that goes through the lens and the effect that it has is it creates bokeh or it has certain things sharp or out of focus. Bokeh, 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 I call it bokeh. Bokeh is a term used for whatever is out of focus in an image. So whenever you see those nice bokeh balls that are out of focus, that's called bokeh. And aperture is a little bit harder to grasp because the smaller the number, the bigger the opening, and the bigger the number, the smaller the opening. But just remember, the smaller the number, the more light that will go into the camera and the more bokeh you will have. The bigger the number, the less light that will go into your camera, but the less bokeh or the more things will be in focus. Notice how much of the camera is in focus. Remember, this is 1.4 aperture and now this, this is an aperture of four. Look at the huge difference in how much of the camera is in focus. This is what will change in your images when you go all the way down to your smallest number in your aperture versus opening it up to at least f4 or so. And I'd say play with this guy so you guys can see how it's changing your image. Now shutter speed. Shutter speed are basically these curtains, the shutter, that open and close in the camera's body. When they open and close, they allow the light to hit the sensor and record the image. Pretty simple, right? Now, when it gets a little bit difficult is that if your shutter speed is too slow, it's going to cause blur, depending on what you're shooting, obviously. If your subject is really fast, well, you will freeze motion, but the amount of light that will come into the sensor is going to be very minimal. If you've ever wondered how they captured those light trail photos, well, it's actually with the slower shutter speed. And if you ever wondered how they captured a bird's wings in the middle of the air, well, that's with a faster shutter speed. And I've actually created a how to catch light trails uh, tutorials. You guys can click it right here. Now the third component is the ISO. And the ISO has to do with your camera sensor and how sensible it is to light. If you have a lower ISO, it obviously won't be that sensible. And if it's a higher ISO, it will be very, very sensible to the light. And you're wondering why do you need a third component? Well, this third component, like all the other ones, will help you shoot when it's a darker situation. When you're shooting at night, when you're shooting a wedding, this is when you need to bump up the ISO so you can help your other settings like the aperture and shutter meet the correct exposure. Now the effects that the ISO has, well, the lower the ISO, the less damage you create to your images and the higher the ISO, the more noise that will start to show up. And this is coming down to digital cameras. Digital cameras create noise, which it's not that pleasing compared to old film cameras. They actually create grain, which actually looks pretty nice. All right, guys, so these are the three components that determine what you're going to do with your photo. Again, all of these have different effects in how your image is going to turn out. Now, the biggest thing you have to remember as well is there is a light meter and that light meter is going to measure the light and it will differentiate with whatever settings you have chosen. So if you want a blurred out image, you want as much bokeh as you, as you can get, you're going to drop down your aperture to 1.8, 3.5, whatever your lens goes to, and then you're going to fix the other settings so your light meter can meet right in the middle because that means your photo is well exposed. So if you ever wonder what that line thing with the 
more lines and a zero and numbers around there is that is your light meter that measures the light when you get it right down in the middle that is a well exposed image now again every situation calls for different settings so it is best for you to know what you're doing what settings you can change that way you can get the image that you want now if you guys like this video find it helpful and know someone that could watch this and learn from this share this video if you can i really really appreciate that don't forget to subscribe and like the video and again if you have any questions comment on this video or if you want to talk hit me up on my instagram or twitter i'm always available to talk guys all right guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next video